good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever in the planet you are, I would like to call the meeting to order. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to the fifth day of the informal virtual session of the 24th meeting of the subsidiary body on scientific, technical and technological advice. The session will continue tomorrow, 26 February, when we will meet for the final time. I would like to bring your attention that based on the initial plan for the organizational work as a state in the scenario note for this meeting, we're supposed to complete agenda item six yesterday. This means that we still between one and one and a half hours behind the schedule. And we still have to complete item six and another three agenda items in addition to find the time to return to the agenda item three and to allow some more observers to make their statements. To achieve this goal, I would like to urge you to cooperate to do our best and that strictly stay strictly within the time allocated for each intervention. I would now like to turn the chairing back over to my colleague from Substa Bureau, Mrs. Mary May Monsungeli from Seychelles. Mary May, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Dear colleagues, Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, it is a pleasure for me to continue to chair the session. We will continue to hear interventions on marine and coastal biodiversity, ecologically or biologically significant marine areas, item six of the SABC 24 provisional agenda, which we began yesterday. Before we begin, I have three reminders. First, when the microphone and camera buttons at the bottom of the screen are red, you may begin to speak immediately. Second, the raise hand button should be pressed only once. If you press it twice, your request will disappear and you will reappear at the end of the list when you press the button again. And third, the time for statements is limited to three minutes to parties, five minutes for regional groups and major groups. A clock is provided on your screen to help you to manage your time. But please do not speed up your reading as this will make it challenging for interpreters to follow you. <clears throat> when we adjourned yesterday evening, we had the following parties on the list of speakers. They were Belgium, Senegal, Italy, Philippines, India, Thailand, China, and Egypt. We heard from Belgium and, Sen and Senegal in parts yesterday, but due to technical challenges of different types, it prevented us from hearing their complete, their complete statements. So I will give them another opportunity today. We did our best to record those who requested the floor, but if we missed any, you will have the opportunity to request the floor once I reopen the queue. Please do not raise your hand now. Rest assured that all parties will have an opportunity to speak. I will call on the parties in the queue individually, so please raise your hand only when I call your name. Once again, please do remember that statements should not exceed three minutes. Speak slowly and clearly so that the interpreters can follow you, and I will be paying particular attention to the time today, so I am counting on your, on your cooperation. I'll take the first intervention now from Belgium. Belgium, please raise your hand. You have the floor. Thank you. 
And although they are still on our minds, future generations are not going to interrupt today. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I think what I, I said yesterday was to uh, um, stress that Belgium is part of the, the group of states that are the blue leaders. We're uh, aiming uh, to or we're supporting 30% of ocean protection through a network of highly and fully protected areas, uh, as well as the finalization of uh, the BB&J uh, agreement negotiations. Uh, then I went on to talk about uh, the EPSA uh, process and particularly the procedure in the annexes which uh, we have some ideas for, but generally we are in agreement of this. And I wanted to highlight one, uh, two things in particular. The first um, is uh, this distinction between the EPSA repository and the information sharing mechanism. And the fact that we have two equally valid claims of uh, national sovereignty on the one hand, and on the other hand, the fact that um, uh, internationally adopted uh, decisions can only be changed by internationally adopted decisions. And although it might not be the prettiest uh, way to solve this uh, dichotomy, um, it, it's our opinion that, 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 that uh, keeping this differentiation between what can go into the repository, which is going through SUBSA and COP, uh, and what can go in uh, directly into the information sharing mechanism, which doesn't have to pass through SUBSA and COP. And so the choice is actually up to the sovereign state. Um, do you want uh, your information in uh, the repository? Then it goes through SUBSA and COP, and otherwise it goes into the information sharing mechanism, and they are equally valid sources of information. Other than that, we had three other priorities, which are the importance of scientifically uh, sound peer review, um, as well as the fact that we are positive that we can make a recommendation. Uh, uh, in the recommendation, we can have a reference to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, as we have done at the previous COP with the necessary footnote. Uh, as others, we would like to see a placeholder uh, for any evolution in the BBNJ High, High Seas Treaty uh, negotiation process. Um, and we support, as others, the collaboration with other processes, such as UNEA, International Seabed Authority, UNFCCC. Um, and please note that these views that we are uh, expressing here are provisional and that we reserve the right uh, to adapt them. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Belgium. Senegal, please raise your hand. You have the floor. Bonjour, Madame la Présidente. Le Sénégal, je me... Morning, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to participate in this uh, session and sorry for the technology issues yesterday. Senegal appreciates the opportunity to participate in the informal dialogue and to provide a response to the progress report on other matters. Regarding the elements of marine and coastal biodiversity in the GBF, as discussed during the November 2019 workshop, and most notably Goal 2, Senegal would like to underscore that there is an existing robust scientific basis for protecting and conserving at least 30% of the world ocean by 2030. In 2016, a study by O'Leary et al. concluded that the 10% IUT target was insufficient to protect biodiversity, preserve ecosystem services, and achieve socioeconomic priorities. Of 144 studies analyzed, more than half have concluded that more than 30% of the ocean should be protected in order to meet the key goals of protected areas, such as maximizing the fisheries yield. In addition, an article by Jones published in 2020 suggests that between 26% and 41% of the ocean should be effectively managed and conserved. The authors described this percentage range as a strict minimum. Moving on to restoration and protection of biodiversity. The most effective protected marine areas are those without removal, those that are completely protected, or those with other effective area-based conservation measures in place. Such zones could increase the total fish biomass by more than 600% on average. We officially call upon SUBSTA 24 to maintain the goal of at least 30% for the ocean and to add qualifying wording calling for these zones to be free of extraction or other harmful or industrial activities. 
Finally, Senegal notes that all the OECMs relative to Goal 2 of the GBF should be fully aligned with the detailed principles of Decision 14-8 of the Conference of the Parties. For example, all area-based measures for managing fisheries with the advantage of sustainability will not be considered to be OECMs, as, that, as what would be required would be a species-based approach. These fisheries management measures could, however, come under goal one, where planning the use of the seas is concerned, which justifies a deeper discussion. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Followed by Philippines and India. Italy, please raise your hand. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, dear colleagues. Italy welcomes the draft recommendations on marine and coastal biodiversity and expresses appreciation for the relevant work done in this field from COP14, including on the identification of options for modifying the description of EPSAS and for describing new areas. We share the relative annexes as relevant tools for progressing not only in this area, but also in the context of other relevant ongoing processes as BBNJ. The recent IPBES and IPCC reports have revealed that the health of our oceans and seas is a serious risk. The adverse effects of climate change, urbanization, overexploitation of marine and coastal environment, as well as, as IUU fishing and invasive alien species have been recognized as the major drivers of ocean biodiversity loss. Confident in the strategic role of the science policy interface, Italy believes the global community should build from the set outcomes and urgently act to bend the curve before it's too late. To this regard, we encourage to seriously consider the ocean climate nexus by strengthening the synergy between the work done in the CBD and UNF C context and identifying new paths of cooperation. On the same line, we encourage further discussion on sensitive themes as deep sea mining and protection and restoration of endangered ecosystems as coral reefs and seagrass meadows. Italy wishes to express support to the UN Decade of Ocean Science as a key opportunity to address gaps and increase knowledge in ocean science, which is strongly needed together with the design and implementation of innovative technologies. We believe post-2020 GBF should give adequate attention to the mentioned themes, starting from a dedicated target, demanding for the protection 30% of global ocean by 2030, in line with the 30 by 30 initiative that Italy strongly supports. This ambition should be accompanied by the identification and implementation of concrete conservation measures to avoid a paper pack scenario, and to this purpose, we demand for a provision according to which at least 10% of the said 30% is under strict protection. We support the need to finalize as soon as possible the BBNJ agreement as a concrete response to the ambitious 30 by 30 goal. Finally, Italy appreciates the mention to the regional programs and organizations as the regional sea conventions and RFMOs and recalls the need to work in close synergy with this context, including for the identification of the post-2020 targets and indicators for an effective and not duplicative monitoring activity. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Italy. I would uh, like to remind colleagues to please read your statements slowly so as to allow for interpretation to be done correctly. I will now invite to the floor India, followed by Thailand and China. India, please raise your hand. India, you have the floor. Okay, um, India, you have the floor.
Okay. Um, I can't seem to um, to get India on. We will move on to to Thailand, and then we will see if we can bring India back. So Thailand, please raise your hand. You have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Thailand takes note the progress of implementation regarding marine and coastal biodiversity made by SCBD and acknowledge relevant organization for high support. Thailand encourage parties and relevant organizations to make use of the above mentioned information to facilitate the conservation and sustainable use of marine and coastal biodiversity and also request SCBD to support the process regarding compiling, synthesizing, and sharing data on the implementation of post-2020 GBFs in the following issues. First, EPSA, intergovernmental meeting to develop DAF's international legally binding repository under the ANCORS on the conservation and sustainable use of marine biodiversity in areas beyond national jurisdiction. On spatial management tools, the establishments of ecologically representative should develop criteria for site selection in consistency with the EPSA criteria under the CBD. Although EPSA identification is implemented as scientific and technical cooperation and still ongoing process on the criteria of in identification, updating, and nomination of new sites, mean of implementation and sites management, especially in area beyond national jurisdiction, were not clearly concluded. In this regard, Thailand recommended Secretary closely coordinate with ANCORS to ensure that the DAF's repository will not duplicate or limit any negotiation or implementation of CBD, especially in Index 7 and 9. In addition to the modified the EPSAS description in Index 3, it was not clearly identified, especially on the difference between chain in the information that was described and EPSA and chain in the ecological or biological factor of EPSA. Second, MalinDB. Thailand supports the inclusion of MalinDB in the post-2020 GBFs to strengthen the conservation of marine biodiversity for continuity and efficiency of future implementation. The regional efforts for MalinDB management should be prioritized and enhanced such as Asian Framework of Action on MALIDB will reflect the cooperation between ASEAN member states, will also significantly facilitate CBD implementation and can be applied as a model for other regions. Thank you very much, Madam. Thank you, Thailand. I will now invite to the floor China, followed by Egypt and then India. China, you have the floor. Can you hear me? Thank you, Madam Chair. China is very pleased to see that the uh, uh, modalities for modifying the description of IPSAS are more specific and detailed now. And we thank also the uh, web uh, workshops and the Secretariat for the work. But I think the document uh, has some uh, uh, problem issues because uh, this document uh, has not addressed the issue of general concerns identified at uh, COP13 and COP14, for instance, the application of UNCLOS and the sovereignty. We have uh, two suggestions. First, the description of IPSAS is a scientific and a technical work and should not involve uh, legal issues such as national sovereignty. Therefore, we suggest that any proposal involving areas subject to jurisdiction disputes uh, should not be considered by COP and the SEPSTA. Secondly, in order to ensure the scientific basis and the transparency of the work, it is recommended that all proposals 
whether within or beyond a national uh, jurisdiction must uh, disclose all relevant uh, information for public comment and uh, be reviewed and approved by SEPSTA and the COP before being included into the repository. We welcome the work of the Secretariat in OECMs and we welcome in uh, the document INF uh, 10 about the expert workshop and uh, parties should uh, further identify and adopt various measures, including OECMs, to protect and restore marine biodiversity, such as um, ecological protection red lines and fishing closure. We also uh, uh, look forward to hearing from all parties sharing their uh, experience and information. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, China. I now invite to the floor Egypt, followed by India and Philippines. Egypt, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Egypt supports the statement presented on behalf of Africa and commends the Secretariat for the excellent documents on the marine and coastal biodiversity. We support recommendations in the document CBD slash Substat 24, agenda item number six. Madam Chair, special planning of marine resources is still in the early stage and requires technical and financial resources. Capacity building and partnerships are of crucial importance for special planning in developing countries. Madam Chair, we have identified two EPSA sites in the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea, and we welcome the proposed modalities from the, for the modification of the description of existing and new EPSAs. We also support extension of the informal advisory group of, on EPSA. We have good news from the Northern Red Sea, Madam Chair, where we have evidence that our coral reefs in the Red Sea are adapting to the expected global warming, and hence they are of global significance. Coral bleaching is minimum, and the world can benefit from the proper protection of our coral reefs. Jeff suggested by 2030, protect and conserve through well-connected and effective system of protected areas and other effective area-based conservation measures, at least 30% of the planet, with a focus on the areas particularly important for biodiversity. So 30 by 30 is affordable, and there is a need for only 0.16% of the global GDP, which is equal to 140 billion years. Thus, 30 by 30 is a good investment return of at least 5 to 1, and hence, will boost the global economy. Political leaders supporting <clears throat> political leaders supporting the sorry political leaders are participating at the United Nations summit on biodiversity in September 2020, representing by 20, 40, 84 countries from all regions and the European Union committed to reserve biodiversity loss by 2030. More than 50 countries joined the high ambition coalition for people and nature in support of 30% of both terrestrial and marine. Madam Chair, sustainable management of marine resources should focus on sustainable use because what benefits people is the use, not management. In GBF, marine ecosystems are monitored by conditions are not extent and recommended the addition of a component focusing on monitoring the extent and condition of marine ecosystem. We also suggest having specific goals and targets to marine environment as a case for the SDG 14, regional sea programs, and the proposed high sea treaty of UN known as conservation of marine biodiversity in areas beyond national jurisdiction. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Egypt. I now invite to the floor India, followed by Philippines. India, please raise your hand.
India, you have the floor. Please make sure your microphone is turned on. India. Okay, um, we're not getting through to India um, once again. So we will proceed to Philippines. Philippines, please raise your hand. Philippines, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Philippines will be reading two statements for tonight, but we would like first to deliver a group or sub-region statement from the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, composed of 10 member states from Southeast Asia, and thereafter we will deliver our country's initial statement of position on this agenda item. The Philippines is honored to speak on this agenda item on behalf of the ASEAN member states and takes note of the proposed recommendations to the COP addressing the modalities for modifying descriptions of ecologically or biologically significant marine areas and for describing new areas. These modalities will strengthen the system of EBSAS, which can help the international community effectively manage these areas to contribute to the overall goals of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. The ASEAN region supports the recommendations to the COP concerning the request to the Executive Secretary to conduct a strategic review and analysis of the program of the work on marine and coastal biodiversity in the context of the implementation of the 2020 global biodiversity framework to submit the results of this review and analysis for consideration by SOBSTA and COP. The region also notes that the connectivity of marine and coastal ecosystem increases the potential to realize an ambitious global target that will take into account not only biodiversity near shore, but also in other marine areas, as determined following clear guidance on the criteria to support this proposed global target. The ASEAN member states have engaged in the collaborative implementation of the issue-based projects, increased coverage of protected areas, improved policies on gear and seasonal cuts controls, conservation partnerships, and integrated land and sea use plans. In several cases, mainstreaming of coastal and marine ecosystem management and national, sub-regional, regional, and intergovernmental initiatives have also been reported. The ASEAN member states invite support for the adoption of an integrated coastal management through the ridge to reef approach, the reduction of pressures to coastal ecosystems for tourism, water pollution, habitat loss, coastal erosion and urban expansion, and the increase of coverage and improvement of the management effectiveness of marine protected areas, and the effective communication of the relevance of coastal and marine species and habitats, their natural man-made impacts on marine, marine biodiversity and human health, and the improvement of fisheries-related policies and their implementation. At this point, the Philippines wishes to emphasize through its national intervention that it has consistently been advocating in other multilateral environment agreements in national, regional, and global fora to minimize unsustainable reclamation and conversion for other uses such as urban expansion, as well as irresponsible tourism and other unsustainable economic practices to prevent biodiversity loss, including the loss of human lives. Moreover, it bears underscoring that interventions for healthy oceans could include economic valuation and adaptive management studies on marine and coastal ecosystem goods and services through strengthened public-private partnership engagement. Also significant are efforts to promote other effective area-based conservation measures, the conduct of vulnerability assessment on climate change risks and exposures of coastal and marine ecosystems, and the creation of livelihood and enterprises for coastal communities. Indeed, in order for 
our goals to come into fruition, we need a whole of community approach to the inclusive and effective implementation of advocacy programs. These crucial steps, as well as the realization of the ambitious global target, will require our concerted actions. It is in this light that the Philippines highlights the merit of protecting critical biodiversity rich marine areas beyond national jurisdictions, as well as all contribute to the conservation of the common heritage of mankind. Thank you, Madam Chair. Now, I I believe Philippines was supposed to have a country statement immediately after the regional statement. Philippines, can you raise your hand again? Please proceed. You will have another two minutes for this statement. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. At this point, the Philippines wishes to emphasize through its national intervention that it has consistently been advocating in other multilateral environment agreements in national, regional, and global fora to minimize unsustainable reclamation and conversion for other uses such as urban expansion as well as irresponsible tourism and other unsustainable economic practices to prevent biodiversity loss, including the loss of human lives. Moreover, it bears underscoring that interventions for healthy oceans could include economic valuation and adaptive management studies on coastal on marine and coastal ecosystem goods and services through a strengthened public-private partnership engagement. Also significant are efforts to promote other effective area-based conservation measures, the conduct of vulnerability assessment on climate change risks and exposures of coastal and marine ecosystems, and the creation of livelihood and enterprises for coastal communities. Indeed, in order for our goals to come into fruition, we need a whole of community approach to the inclusive and effective implementation of advocacy programs. These crucial steps, as well as the realization of the ambitious global target, will require our concerted actions. It is in this light that the Philippines highlights the merit of protecting critical biodiversity-rich marine areas beyond national can, jurisdiction. Can you please, can you please slow well down as, on your statement, please? Sorry to interrupt you, but can you please slow down your statement? Sorry. These crucial steps, as well as the realization of the ambitious global target, will require our concerted actions. It is in this light that the Philippines highlights the merit of protecting critical biodiversity-rich marine areas beyond national jurisdiction, as well as we all contribute to the conservation of the common heritage of mankind. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. do so to do so so that uh, it makes it easier for the interpreter interpreters to read along um your statements i will now um try to give the floor once again to india india just make sure that your mic and camera buttons and um under your own device settings are on so that allow um, it allows you to to come through there we go we see you now thank you madam chair uh, uh, India strongly urges all parties to come together and commit to protect its oceans from unsustainable uh, fishing. Oil spills, plastic pollution, abundant gross fishing nets, and other marine uh, debris. We all need to learn from what we could not achieve through IG targets and ensure that we explicitly mention such targets in Target 1, 2, and 17 to make them more holistic and robust. Besides garnering commitments for protecting our marine areas, we also need to come together and ensure sustainable management of all our coastal and marine areas to secure the crucial ecosystem services and functions they provide. We must also recognize and encourage the fisher folks, other tribal and local communities to manage their areas well 
and support their efforts to conserve and conserve and sustainably use marine and coastal biodiversity. We support the development of a strategic review and analysis of the program of work on marine and coastal biodiversity in the context of implementation of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework and urge all parties and other stakeholders to share data as well as use spatial planning to resolve issues like illegal and unregulated fishing, ocean acidification, marine debris, and pollution. India will submit its statements at the formal substar meeting subsequently. Thank you very much. Thank you, India. So that is, is the end of my list from yesterday. If any other party would now like to take the floor, please press the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen, which will turn yellow. Your request will be entered in the queue. When I give you the floor, your microphone will be activated. The status bar will turn red on your computer and you may start to speak immediately. Okay, I now have on my list, Jordan. Jordan, you have the floor. Uh, shukran, uh, Sayyidati Al-Raisa. Uh, uh, shukran uh, lakum jami'an. Nahnu uh, fadnalaka al-Urdani al-Hashimiya. Madam Chair, in Jordan, we support the protection of marine environments. It is important to collaborate with all of the partners in order to maintain the progress already achieved. It is also important to implement the goals of the Global Biodiversity Framework. In Jordan, in 2020, last December, we declared our first natural reserve in Jordan, and it covers 27 square kilometers. It is the first natural reserve, and it represents ecosystems of the northern part of the Red Sea. At the same time, we have a problem. There is a threat in the Red Sea. There is a boat on that sea that uh, contains uh, hydrocarbons that threaten ecosystems and the risk is elevated by technical problems. Also, we are at risk of uh, oil being spilled into the Red Sea and we have tried to contact the people involved in order to put an end to this environmental catastrophe. And so I would like to draw your attention under this agenda item, and I hope that there will be a recommendation through the Convention Secretariat that will address the persons involved in order to resolve this issue and to avoid this environmental disaster, which could lead to uh, terrible uh, consequences. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Jordan. I see no more requests from parties. Therefore, we will now move on to um, interventions from non-parties, followed by organizations beginning with major groups. Okay, I don't see uh, many requests from non-parties. So we move on to the organizations. Um, on behalf of uh, IPLCs, IPLCs, you have the floor. Thank you. Can you hear me? I can't see. Madam Chair, I'm speaking on behalf of the International Indigenous Forum on Biodiversity, the IIFB, 
As Indigenous peoples, we have managed our marine and coastal environments for thousands of years and proven sustainable practices that support biodiversity and sustainable use. We are a part of the marine and coastal environment and are one of the first peoples to experience the impacts of changes occurring. As these changes occur, we are constantly utilising and adjusting thousands of years of knowledge and practices that has ensured our food security, culture integrity, and overall entire ecosystem health for all to enjoy. Our food security, sovereignty and security are core to any discussion about the marine and coastal environments, and this needs to be fully recognised. We work, all work focused on spatial planning, conservation effective measures and management needs to include us through equitable practices, include our knowledge provided through the application of free, prior and informed consent. As IPLCs, we call for the consideration of the declaration of culturally significant areas. In order to identify culturally significant areas, we request support for regional meetings to develop Indigenous indicators for monitoring cultural and biological diversity. We believe working directly with IPLCs to gain a greater understanding of our proven sustainable practices to inform CBD on holistic approaches is needed to inform adaptive decision making with humans as part of the environment. The IIFB has identified that a number of key actions must be included in the recommendations and documents for the coastal and marine biodiversity, as they all have an impact on our livelihoods and way of life. The following should be included in the key actions which should be undertaken with free prior and informed consent of the Indigenous peoples and local communities. Indigenous food security and food sovereignty, recognising the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, include culturally significant areas in the redefining of ecologically or biologically significant areas, Terms of reference further develop to call for meaningful engagement of Indigenous peoples actively involved in defining ecologically, biologically and culturally significant areas. Facilitate the development of indicators from Indigenous peoples for ecologically, biologically and culturally significant areas. Ensure that work program on island biodiversity includes islands within the Arctic. Ensure we are fully informed and resourced to participate with the work plan on biodiversity in cold water areas within the jurisdictional scope of the Convention. And recognising that what happens on the land eventually impacts the ocean, which is our food gathering areas and which connects us to the ocean and the coast. Therefore, IIFB recommends in Annex 2, under 2, an additional clause to be included at E, information provided by IPLCs with their free, prior and informed consent is critical to the acknowledgement and understanding of IPLCs' contribution to the monitoring and maintenance of EBSIS. In Annex 3, A, add the words after traditional knowledge with the free prior and informed consent of IPLCs. In Annex 4, 3, add the words after relevant knowledge, including applying the free prior informed consent of the IPLCs that hold their knowledge. In Annex 8, D, include the words after including comments received, and ensuring that IPLCs have been included with free prior informed consent. The IIFP has submitted our recommendations in a full statement in writing. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, IPLCs. Um, I now give the floor to Fan on behalf of women's organizations. And Jill Fan, you have the floor.
Uh, can you hear me? Thank you, Chair. In the current document, substance slash 24 slash 6, prepared for the former session on IBES, we welcome the recommendations in annexes 1 to 14 in form of the Brussels workshop. In giving recognition to collaboration with the holders of traditional knowledge, but we hope that it will be further strengthened. Indigenous peoples and local communities continue to contribute significantly in the conservation, governance, management, and knowledge of marine coastal areas and islands that today are crucial for all to live in harmony with nature. And women are an essential part of it. We encourage CBD and parties give due gender considerations in ensuring that the collaborations are inclusive, equitable, and meaningful, and further enhanced to ensure collective efforts in the identification, modification, and description of EPSAs, including FPIC. Further, there is a need to address and reflect work on the components of the goals and targets of the new post-GBF monitoring framework, including the relevance of and the contribution that possibly 320 plus EPSAs worldwide could assist. Numbers that we assume will only grow in the coming years. Creating synergies would be an important aspect of and within the various areas of work within the convention in mainstreaming some common elements of work to support the implementation of the GBF. Considering that they are interlinked to assess the ecological and biological and livelihood significance of marine and coastal areas and territories. There is an urgent need to protect oceans and safeguard livelihoods of millions of coastal and island communities from threats like plastic pollution, overfishing, ocean heating, acidification, and anthropogenic marine noise, which has doubled in the last 70 years. Seabed mining and marine geoengineering entail additional and incalculable risk to marine biodiversity. The UN nation the, estimates that as much as 80% of all, all global pollutants originates from land-based activities. We call on you to find solutions to the impact of chemicals, including androsine disrupting chemicals, as well as pesticides and radioactive pollutions on sustainability and health of marine, coastal, and island biodiversity, including on well-being of peoples. Despite important support for the ocean, the historical achievements of IPLCs sustainable use and conservation of the marine area areas and territories of life have not been recognized as crucial models of governance to be replicated. A rights-based ecosystem approach will help ensure the recognition and restitution of tenure and access rights, provide equal opportunities and adequate resources for coastal and island communities, including for women and youth. The recognition of the duty to obtain FPIC is an important minimum precautionary standard. All seeded cultures are vital to the planetary life support system. We encourage parties to give special considerations to small scale fisherwomen and fishermen from coastal and island communities in process relating to sustainable use, conservation, and management of marine resources, including marine spatial planning, ensuring not holders of all knowledge are part of transparent inclusive and equitable partnership, the whole of society. We also call for the inclusive indicators that measure in this regard in the monitoring framework, including but not limited to the implementation of the FAO's voluntary guideline for the sustainability of small scale fishers in the context of food security and poverty eradication. Madam Chair, in ending, we encourage parties to strengthen synergies and systematically integrate and prioritize biodiversity and food security considerations in all ocean-related governance processes, including UNFCCC, BBNJ, and the National Seabed Authority, including other processes, the UNEP, the SICOM, and other MEAs. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, I will now invite to the floor representative of the youth, followed by the um, NGO Econexis. Youth, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm speaking on behalf of the Global Youth Biodiversity Network. Diverse young people all over the world are key partners in making decisions and implementing actions that contribute 
to healthy and thriving marine and coastal biodiversity. We also recognize and appreciate the value of the Earth's waters, which are crucial parts of the life support system of all species, and which provide us not only with goods and services, but with which we form deep social, cultural, and spiritual connections as well. We express our appreciation for including youth in discussions and expert workshops around marine and coastal biodiversity issues thus far, and urge you to continue to ensure that discussions as we move forward are inclusive and participatory. We must not forget that these discussions have deep implications on the ground, on issues of livelihood, food security, equitable governance, cultural vitality, and resilience. Thus, decisions cannot be made without the free, prior, and informed consent of Indigenous peoples and extensive consultation with local communities, women, and youth. In particular, regarding drafting of the terms of reference for the relevant expert advisory group on EBSATS, we must make sure that youth and relevant rights holders are clearly stated in the composition of such group. On the topic of EBSAS and marine spatial planning, we make the following points to be considered. First, marine spatial planning must take into consideration future changes, such as climate change, sea level rise, and changes in species distributions, as well as the impacts of the exploration and exploitation of minerals in the seabed, of which the cumulative effects may dramatically alter marine ecosystems. Areas defined as ecologically and biologically significant today may undergo changes in the future, and so we must ensure that we are able to adapt as needed to these changes. Additionally, describing areas as EBSAs should be strategic, taking into consideration their potential as local hotspots and the ways they can affect surrounding waters. Importantly, any designation of marine protected areas must ensure that they are just and equitable and do not infringe on the rights of indigenous peoples and local communities to access, govern, and manage the waters upon which they vitally depend. On other matters, we recognize the efforts to synthesize information on topics such as marine debris, underwater noise, and marine spatial planning. Efforts to address marine debris must also include pollutants, such as metals, nutrients, and ghost nets, and must consider the potential impacts of mixing of different chemical pollutants. We also call upon parties to uphold the polluter pace principle. Additionally, more effort should be given to address the issue of bycatch in fisheries, loss of genetic diversity in marine environments, harmful subsidies in the fishing industry that lead to overfishing, and the increasing threat of deep sea mining and marine geoengineering. We urge parties to strictly uphold the precautionary principle in decision making, keeping in mind the limitations in our knowledge on ocean systems and the potentially massive and irreversible impacts and risks. Discussions must also consider the interlinkages of marine and coastal biodiversity with many other topics under discussion, such as invasive alien species, effective area-based conservation, risk assessment, and the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. To end, we hope the connectedness of our oceans reminds us that the actions and solutions from all over the world are also connected. Moreover, may we also be guided by our place as future ancestors to the coming generations and take sound decisions that enable them to live on a planet with healthy lands and waters. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, youth. Um, I now invite to the floor, um, on behalf of NGOs, the NGO Econexus. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm, this intervention is delivered on behalf of the CBD Alliance, and it gathers a diverse range of views and proposals from civil society. The sea provides food security and livelihoods for millions of people worldwide, and this relationship is diverse and complex. Up to now, the blue economy discourse has not reflected the intrinsic value of a strong relationship based on traditional knowledge of rights holders of coastal marine and island territories. A vision based exclusively on economic value and market oriented proposals is neither just nor equitable for guaranteeing the transformative conservation efforts that we need to have. Besides the economic, social, cultural and environmental values of the ocean and its resources and people. 
threats to marine and coastal biodiversity. We urgently need to protect the ocean from threats like plastic pollution, abandoned, discarded fishing gear, overfishing, destructive techniques, ocean heating, acidification, deoxygenation and anthropogenic marine noise, which has doubled in some oceans of, of every decade for the past 70 years. These threats are eroding the ocean's ability to function as our life support system, and this requires its explicit inclusion in targets 1, 2 and 17. Indigenous people and local communities. They are the active caretakers of the sea, with examples of local government, governance that promote sustainable use and management of those marine territories. We must ensure that our conservation initiatives promote and protect these efforts and guarantee recognition of local and indigenous governance models that can reduce ocean grabbing by economic and industrial interests. The support of a human rights based ecosystem approach to marine conservation and marine spatial planning is crucial. We must also recognize the rights and traditional knowledge and practices of IPLCs, taking into account the role of women in all their diversity as holders of rights and traditional knowledge and the duty to obtain free prior and informed consent and ensure their meaningful participation in the description and modification of ecologically or biologically significant marine areas, as well as in any decisions relating to conservation and sustainable use of marine and coastal biodiversity that affect them. Voluntary guidelines for sustainable small scale fisheries. The implementation of these voluntary guidelines in the context of food security and poverty eradication brings a human rights approach to marine conservation, ensuring the cost of this conservation is not paid by IPLCs. Any efforts for marine conservation and sustainable use of marine and coastal biodiversity should guarantee tenure and access rights to local coastal and island communities. Deep sea ecosystems. We urge COP15 to reiterate and reinforce the decision taken by COP7 to, I quote, urgently take the necessary short-term, medium-term and long-term measures to eliminate, avoid destructive practices to the biodiversity of seamounts and other underwater features, hydrothermal vents, cold water corals and other vulnerable ecosystems in areas beyond national jurisdiction, COP7 decision 7-5. The biodiversity found in deep abyssal plains is particularly vulnerable with the recovery times from human impacts estimated to be thousands to millions of years. It's imperative that any consideration of resource extraction activities in the deep sea must be considered within the context of a highly precautionary approach and consider the impacts on and risks to marine biodiversity, life, ecosystem functions and services, planetary health and food security. Likewise, we encourage parties to prohibit marine geoengineering that entails incalculable risks to marine biodiversity and numerous environment and development goals. Other effective conservation measures. The designation of these, OECM, should include indigenous community conservation areas, marine managed areas, local management area, marine areas, and other fisheries co-management arrangements. The management of these areas should privilege selective small scale fishing practices. Monitoring elements and indicators for this target, target two, can include reporting on the number, area and contribution of such areas. The principles of preferential access to and sustainable use of marine and inland wild capture fishery resources by IPLC small scale fishers and fish workers should be promoted while considering the role of women in small scale fisheries and ensuring legal and safe harvest of these resources. Target eight. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, NGO Econexus, on behalf of the CBD Alliance. I will now open the floor for interventions from other observers. Please raise your hands. Okay, um, I have a few. Um, I will start with, uh, I will call to the floor UNFAO, followed by UN Dualus. UNFAO, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. 
and Secretariat for your work on preparing marine and coastal papers. In seeking to educate, engage, power and encourage biodiversity conservation across marine and coastal systems, delivery of spatial protection through the exclusion of direct human pressures like fishing or recognizing places of special importance for extraordinary consideration like EBSAs will undoubtedly deliver benefits for biodiversity. However, if the 2020 is to be transformative beyond business as usual, the framework needs to influence users of biodiversity. Inasmuch, it is here at the interplay of people and the rest of natural systems where biodiversity is used for food and other services that the task of saving biodiversity will be won or lost. So the challenge is how to craft the framework to ensure it promotes a better relationship between people and nature in the 90 to 70 percent of the ocean and coastal environments. This requires a shift in the sentiment to welcome and promote use approaches, food and other biodiversity services where they are sustainable and conducted through ecosystem approaches. It's not just a pathway but a priority for achieving biodiversity conservation. I've spoken to the need for the post-2020 to welcome and not control or demonize human use of biodiversity in aquatic systems, and now shift my comments to how we can more, be more effective at measuring progress in the framework's implementation. Noting action to conserve biodiversity will primarily be delivered at local scales, we are challenged by the disconnect between what is happening locally and what can be measured globally. However, we cannot let this challenge negatively impact adaptive local delivery of biodiversity conservation action. Instead, we need to reaffirm that the primary role of indicators is not to measure global signal, but to measure and guide adaptive progress in conserving biodiversity by local actors at local scales. We need to support and invest in this work and unduly weight our attention towards metrics because they are simple for global reporting, considering protected areas or forest coverage metrics as examples. It is likely that in achieving consistency and coherence in local approaches to eventually populate global databases, the CBD community, including FAO, will need to promote real-time conversations over the coming decade accepting at first the full range of indicators that have been adopted and shared from local activities. This confirms that we should be wary of finalizing indicators while we are still negotiating goals and targets for Kunming. FAO suggests we need to make space for invest in an ongoing process of translating local into global indicators over the coming decade, led by the Secretariat of the CBD and with inputs from other global leadership organizations. FAO stands ready to play its part in this task. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, FAO. I now invite to the floor UN Dualos, followed by IOC UNESCO and Gionon. UN Dualos, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. In the interest of time, I just take the floor to inform delegations that the Division for Ocean Affairs and the Law of the Sea of the Office of Legal Affairs of the UN or Dualos, which I represent and which uh, acts as the Secretariat of the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea and the United Nations Fish Stocks Agreement, and also currently provides the uh, Secretariat for the Intergovernmental Conference on an International Legally Binding Instrument under Rank Clause on the Conservation and Sustainable Use of Marine Biological Diversity of Areas Beyond National Jurisdiction, has made its statement available through the dedicated online platform. This statement provides some information on developments under uh, UNCLOS and the, at the UN General Assembly of relevance to the work of, uh, of SABSTA. Of course, also to reiterate that uh, DOALOS continues to stand ready to assist the CBD discussions with a view to promoting a better understanding of UNCLOS and its related agreements, as well as their uniform and consistent application and effective implementation. Thank you. Thank you, Dualos. I now invite to the floor IOC, IOC UNESCO, 
followed by Geobon and IUCN. Your, UNESCO, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, Excellencies, and thank you for giving us the floor. First of all, let me congratulate you on the important work carried out in the last period, and thank you for the opportunity to share our perspectives on behalf of the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO. We recognise a large number of synergies and partnerships that exist already between the Secretariat and the parties of the Convention on Biological Diversity and the work of the IOC. With the commencement of the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development in January 2021, which is being coordinated by IOC, we look forward to developing new synergies, collaborations and partnerships. We would like to highlight a number of specific issues in this regard and more details can be found in our written statement. Firstly, in relation to coastal and marine aspects of the post-2020 GBF, we're grateful for having had the opportunity to make comments and suggestions on the indicators and targets and see they're reflected in the document. These comments and suggestions focused on the need to avoid duplication with existing processes and to optimise linkages with efforts to develop a global marine biodiversity observing system based on the social, essential ocean variables coordinated through the Biology and Ecosystems Panel of the Global Ocean Observing System with support from the Marine Biodiversity Observation Network of GeoBon, our own Ocean Biodiversity Information System, OBIS, and in collaboration with Global Biodiversity Information Facility and other partners. Secondly, we warmly welcome the technical reports referred to in the Executive Secretary's report and note the high degree of common ground between many of these issues and IOC's programs and the Ocean Decade challenges. We believe these will be extremely useful resources in the future. Thirdly, we congratulate the work being carried out on capacity development under the Sustainable Ocean Initiative. We would like to express our willingness to collaborate further with this initiative via IOC's programs, for example, the Ocean Teacher Global Academy, our Large Marine Ecosystems Program, and our Marine Spatial Planning Program. In this respect, and specifically in relation to ecologically or biologically significant marine areas, we would like to offer to host the EBSA training manual on the Ocean Teacher Global Academy platform. We also look forward to collaborating on future capacity development initiatives that will be developed by IOC and partners as part of the Ocean Decade and which will have a focus on SIDS and least developed countries. Finally, we would like to express our support to continue our involvement through the SIO, SOI Global Dialogue, particularly in relation to large marine ecosystems and sustainable blue economy. And we encourage the participation of our IOC regional subcommissions in this dialogue. Thank you for your attention. And again, more details can be found in our written statement, which we have uploaded to the platform. Thank you, Giovon. I now um, give the floor to IUCN, followed by IGOS Prep and BirdLife International. IUCN, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Chair, and good day to all. IUCN very much welcomes the progress achieved during the expert workshop for modifying and describing new EBSAs, including the annexes that accompany the draft recommendation. IUCN supports efforts to clarify the concepts and modalities and encourages parties to ensure that the EBSA process continues based on the most up-to-date science with full participation of relevant experts and knowledge holders. IUCN is ready to contribute knowledge for the identification of marine key biodiversity areas and important marine mammal areas and other relevant knowledge that can provide valuable input. This includes information to support the urgent need to establish marine protected areas and other effective area-based conservation measures. Regarding biodiversity concerns in fisheries, IUCN's fisheries expert group has collaborated with FAO and CBD for many years on mainstreaming of fisheries, assessing the progress towards Aichi targets 6 and 11. IUCN is committed to pursue this collaboration to work towards greater and more effective mainstreaming of biodiversity in fisheries. On the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework, IUCN welcomes the thematic workshop report on marine and coastal biodiversity 
and supports the request to review and revise the program of work on marine and coastal biodiversity so that it fully and clearly aligns to and supports implementation of the new framework. IUCN encourages parties to include the conservation and sustainable use of marine and coastal biodiversity in the post-2020 framework and to reflect this in the monitoring framework. IUCN welcomes the development of a CBD technical series on anthropogenic underwater noise and looks forward to guidance that can support countries in their efforts to mitigate this type of marine pollution. Finally, IUCN highlights that marine spatial planning can support the synergistic achievement of existing and future biodiversity targets. The SDGs and national climate change commitments under UNFCCC. Therefore, IUCN encourages the continued compilation of exercises and experiences related to marine spatial planning and increased efforts to enhance national capacity. We also invite parties to consider IUCN's recently released guidance for mitigating biodiversity impacts associated with solar and wind energy development. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I will now um, I will now give the floor to Joe Bon. You had uh, disappeared from my list for a little while. You have the floor. Thank you. Do you hear me? Thank you, Madam Chair. There has been excellent scientific progress in developing technologies for in situ biodiversity monitoring, and in developing and implementing data formatting standards and open data systems. However, there is insufficient regular biodiversity monitoring that is representative of coastal, pelagic, and deep ocean environment habitats across latitudes and food web types required to implement an effective monitoring and evaluation framework for the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. There is also a significant time delay, five to 10 year time delay in data getting published in the Global Biodiversity Information Facility and the Ocean Biodiversity Information System. The standardized systems paid for by many countries to integrate and make biodiversity data publicly available. These limitations in monitoring and in data archiving and publication do not follow for timely, do not allow for timely information or advice to governments and other public and private sector decision makers about trends in biodiversity and ecosystem services. In this light, Geobon has the following priority considerations for incorporating existing marine and coastal information efforts into the draft recommendation. One, that countries more formally adapt the biodiversity data publication standards already developed and required data collected by government funded research and monitoring to be routinely published into the Global Biodiversity Information Facility and the Ocean Biodiversity Information System. Second, establish mechanisms to coordinate and synergize the post 2020 CBD effort with the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development, the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration, Geobon, and the Sustainable Ocean Initiative. Third, the CBD, its parties, and other public and private sector decision makers can again from advances in the definition documentation and application of best practices of the ocean science variables and essential biodiversity variables. Fourth, ask countries to financially support capacity development and technology sharing, including science and citizen science efforts to expand monitoring of marine biodiversity to be more representative of biodiversity and geography and enable the forecasting of ecosystem services. And last, ensuring that existing and new core biodiversity knowledge products necessary to track progress toward the proposed post-2020 indicators are sufficiently financed and ensure their sustainability. These recommendations can have substantial positive impact on the CBD's coastal and marine biodiversity strategies and on relevant data and data management practices. Best practices in monitoring, monitoring and data management should be coordinated with open international UN databases. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would now invite to the floor SPREP, followed by BirdLife International, and then Gobi. SPREP, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can you hear me? 
Yes. I'm um, relating to item one, EBSAs. The Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Program considers that the EBSA process is important for protecting biodiversity and to achieve a 100% sustainable managed oceans, including 30% marine protected areas. We therefore support the extension of the term for the informal expert advisory panel on EBSAs. SPREP broadly agrees with the general considerations for the modifications of EBSAs as outlined in Annex 1. We support the engagement of science and traditional knowledge in the considerations of any modification and descriptions of any EBSA and that the information and process should be transparent if the appropriate permissions of traditional knowledge holders are granted. We would like to suggest that climate change be added more explicitly in the annexes, possibly in the Annex 1 list of general considerations as climate change may amplify or subsequently diminish the ecological significance of a particular area and the climate change forecast developed by IPCC should therefore be considered in our present deliberations on EBSAs. We note that Annex 3, Reason C, would implicitly cover the effects of climate change, but we feel that as climate change is such a significant threat to biodiversity and may alter the distribution of species, then it should be elevated to a more prominent mention in the annexes. We would like to suggest that the references to, to reasons A to F in this and in some subsequent annexes should also include references to Annex 3 for clarity. SPREP supports the development of guidelines for peer review process on EBSIS. Relating to item two, other matters, uh, the Ocean Pathways Workshop, we thank the Secretariat for the information note on this report held in Canada. We would like to reiterate the importance of ocean and coastal biodiversity for the Pacific region. SPREP feels that while some of the comments from that meeting have been incorporated into the new global biodiversity framework, there still does not seem to be adequate concrete actions in the framework which relate specifically to the special characteristics of the marine environment. The framework needs to set the agenda, provide clear targets which will enable cross-sectoral coordination and mobilise the urgent conservation efforts needed to achieve a 100% sustainably managed ocean. Relating to item H, Sustainable Ocean Initiative, SPREP would like to acknowledge the generous financial support of the governments of the Republic of Korea, France and Japan for the SOI dialogues. We feel that the cross-sectoral engagement of the regional level is very important because each region has its own challenges and characteristics. SPREP would like to see further development of the SOI dialogues and a process developed whereby regional meetings can be funded and facilitated under this program. We would also like to suggest that the CBD Secretariat explore ways in which pools of experts and expertise and experience in each region may be formed so that those states or organisations that struggle to find capacity for gathering and accessing science and knowledge, for example, for marine spatial planning, can progress these important steps to balance the three pillars of the convention. Thank you. Thank you, Sprep. I now invite to the floor BirdLife International, followed by Gobi and WCS. BirdLife International, you have the floor. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Good. Um, thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity to speak today. I speak on behalf of BirdLife International, Conservation International, Cordial East Africa and WWF. Distinguished delegates, to start with, we applaud the CBD community for the extensive efforts invested to date in the process to describe and identify EPSA throughout our oceans. Today, we wish to present two overarching recommendations in preparation for the actual SUBSTA 24 deliberations. These support statements of distinguished delegations of Germany, Chile, Finland, and others made in the course of this session. Firstly, we would like to stress the importance of continuing the process to enable the description of new areas found to meet the EPSA criteria and the scientific update of existing EPSAs. The CBD parties should ensure that the EBSAS process continues with the strengthened technical and scientific provisions to guarantee that this process is based on the most up-to-date sound science and subject to transparent and scientifically 
robust peer review. Our second recommendation concerns the other matter sections under the same document. CBD parties should thoroughly and comprehensively address the entire range of existing and future pressures and impacts on coastal and marine biodiversity, including but not limited to anthropogenic underwater noise or marine debris, and also taking into account cumulative impacts with a view to defining adequate measures to immediately address these multiple pressures including through the implementations of previous COP decisions and guidance. The relevance of the topics and issues subsumed under other matters should be clearly recognized. Only by form of a supplement to the recommendation on EPSAS is an appropriate and neglects the importance of adequately addressing these with a view to achieve the objectives of the Convention and secure healthy oceans. It is therefore strongly suggested to define a more appropriate reference for these topics and issues. To finalize, we would like to express our support to the statement of Africa Group that coastal and marine biodiversity must be given an appropriate level of prominence in the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. More detailed recommendations on marine and coastal biodiversity related to topics will be shared in advance of the physical substance meeting. Birdlife International, Conservation International, Cordial East Africa and WWF stands ready to support any efforts of parties, other governments, organizations and local communities to make the necessary progress to keep our planet blue and alive. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Birdlife. Um, I now invite to the floor Gobi, followed by WCS and IWC. Gobi, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I hope you can hear me. Um, the, Global Biodiversity, the Global Ocean Biodiversity Initiative, Gobi, welcomes document Substa 246 uh, and supports calls made by parties to split the recommendations therein i.e. a recommendation on EBSAs and a second recommendation on conservation of marine and coastal biodiversity. GOBI, with financial support from the Government of Germany, has made significant efforts to coordinate scientific research, generating new data relevant to the EBSA process, which may be relevant to the EBSA modification, subject to scrutiny by states' parties. For example, this week, as part of a GOBI project, the IUCN Marine Mammal Task Force is undertaking uh, a virtual workshop to describe important marine mammal areas for the Black Sea, Turkish Straits system and Caspian Sea region. This will consider information on the Caspian Sea highlighted by the distinguished colleague of Ukraine on behalf of CEE and workshop results will be made publicly available. Gobi notes the urgency to conserve marine biodiversity as highlighted by IPBES and the Ocean Climate Nexus and supports more explicit recognition of marine targets in the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Gobi. I now call to the floor WCS. You have the floor. Thank you. Can you hear me, Chair? Thank you very much. And WCS welcomes the work of the CBD Secretariat and parties on marine and coastal biodiversity. Um, there will be more details and there are more details in our written statement. We have a large and active marine conservation program across the globe, and we were very pleased to attend the CBD thematic consultation on marine and coastal biodiversity in November 2019. I'll just make three short points today, or right now. We welcome the statements from the many parties supporting protection and conservation of at least 30% of the global ocean by 2030 as part of the global biodiversity framework. Second, we welcome the attention to the critically important issue of underwater anthropogenic noise. We were very pleased to contribute our scientific and technical expertise during the peer review process on the information document. We're concerned that anthropogenic noise pollution is no longer explicitly addressed in the monitoring framework for target six, 
despite quite supportive peer review comments. We urge further work by experts leading up to the formal session of SUBSTA to enable parties to agree on global indicators for anthropogenic underwater noise pollution. A recent scientific paper is an outstanding review of this issue, and the link to that paper is in our written statement, and I will put it in the, in the uh, chat here. Three, we welcome IFDOC 2, which summarizes the efforts of parties to achieve Aichi Target 10 for coral reefs. However, we note that there's no corollary to Aichi Target 10 in the current draft global biodiversity framework. We are a member of the International Coral Reef Initiative, along with over 40 parties, as well as IGOs and NGOs. ICRI has done significant work to generate a consensus recommendation on elements of the framework and monitoring framework that will work most effectively for coral reefs, which has been submitted to the Secretariat and parties the link is in our written statement, and I'll put it in the chat shortly. Therefore, we strongly urge parties to ensure that relevant goals, targets, and indicators are adopted with coral reef ecosystems in mind, in line with the ECRI recommendations. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. I now uh, give the floor to IWC. IWC, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, thank you, Chair, for allowing the International Whaling Commission to intervene on this important agenda item, which is central to our mandate and very close to our hearts. The work of the IWC reflects a broad range of threats to cetaceans, encompassing many issues of mutual interest with the CBD. We welcome CBD progress on these shared challenges, including area-based management, anthropogenic underwater noise, marine debris and sustainably managed fisheries, to which, in the interest of time, we will limit our more detailed remarks. Bycatch and entanglement of cetaceans in fishing gears is the single biggest global threat to cetacean populations. At its meeting in 2016, the IWC endorsed a bycatch mitigation initiative to develop, assess and promote bycatch prevention and mitigation measures worldwide and support countries in addressing bycatch. This collaborative initiative is developing a capacity building program and a series of pilot projects where approaches to bycatch reduction can be implemented and scaled up to national level. The engagement of the fisheries sector is essential in this initiative, as is the engagement and incentivizing of fishing communities. With this in mind, we welcome CBD collaboration with the FAO and regional fisheries bodies. We urge that this work continue to take into account the critical issue of bycatch of non-target species which is a multi tax issue and is essential to ensure fisheries are sustainably managed. This could also be strengthened in the post-2020 global biodiversity framework, including the establishment of a specific reference to reducing and preventing fisheries bycatch of non-target species in Target 4. In this respect, we hope that the CBD will join the IWC and other biodiversity-related conventions in welcoming the publication of the FAO Guidelines to Prevent and Reduce Bycatch of Marine Mammals and Capture Fisheries, and hope that this could be reflected in the final SUBSTA recommendation. We look forward to further cooperation with the CBD on this issue, as well as our other shared concerns. Thank you. Thank you, IWC. Dear colleagues, due to time constraints, I will have to close the list here. For those observers who have been unable to make your interventions, please make sure that you do post them online so that we, um, um, so that colleagues and other participants can also um, uh, refer to them. As previously explained, there will be no conference room papers stemming from this informal session. Together with the chair of the Substar, the Secretariat will prepare a short procedural report on this informal session, noting the parties and observers that have made interventions. We will now take a 15-minute break 
So please retain your connection during the break. There is no need for you to log off. We will reconvene at 8.45 when we will be taking up the next agenda item on biodiversity and agriculture in a session that will be chaired by Mr. Adams to Saint of St. Lucia. I thank the chair and my colleagues in the bureau for giving me the opportunity to chair this session and I thank you all for your cooperation. Thank you. See you after the break. Very much, my May.
Excellencies, distinguished delegates, good evening around the, to those of you around the world. Um, dear colleagues, I'm happy to chair our consideration of item seven of the Substar 24th Provisional Agenda on Biodiversity and Agriculture. I give the floor to the Secretariat to introduce the item. Secretariat, you have the floor. Please take the floor. Thank you, Chair. To facilitate uh, the deliberations on item seven, biodiversity and agriculture, the Executive Secretary has prepared document CBD Substat 24 7 Rev 1 on the review of the international initiative of the conservation and sustainable use of soil biodiversity, an updated plan of action. This document contains in section three, a suggested recommendation for the consideration of this body. The following information document may also be relevant to the deliberations to this agenda item, CVD slash SELSTA 24 slash INF slash 8, entitled Report on the State of Knowledge of Soil Biodiversity Prepared by FAO, the Intergovernmental Technical Panel on Soils, the Global Soil Partnership, the Secretary of the Convention on Biological Diversity, the Global Soil Biodiversity Initiative and the European Commission. Please also note that there are two video presentations to introduce this item available on the meeting documents page of, for this session as shown on your screen. And the presentations are entitled um, Update on FAO's work on biodiversity uh, by Irene Hoffman and findings and messages of the report State of Knowledge on Soil Biodiversity Status, Challenges and Potentialities by Ronald Vargas, both uh, colleagues from FAO. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Secretariat. I now open the floor for intervention on item seven, biodiversity and agriculture, starting with regional groups, followed by parties and then observers. I now take intervention, the first intervention from African region, African region represented by Ghana, Ghana, you have the floor. Please press on the raise your hand item button and then take the floor. Thank you. Adams, I think you are on mute. Oh, yeah. Okay, I don't hear Ghana. I don't know what is the problem. So um, I'll now move on to Central and Eastern European region, represented by Moldova. Please press, please press on the raise your hand button and to take the floor. Moldova, you have the floor. Please take the floor, Moldova. Уважаемый господин председатель, как представители Республики Молдова имеют честь as representatives of the CEE uh, Moldova uh, I'm sorry the interpreter would ask that this um, be slowed down please 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 slow down the speaker please I cannot interpret at this speed стран региона и то что сельскохозяйственные экосистемы would ask that this be slowed down taking into account these Allah. very much And could we start from the beginning, please?
uh, and all of the international in, in, uh, institutions developing biodiversity in all agriculture sectors in order to ensure food security. I will not present policy and research achievements on the part of our countries because they are major achievements on degradation and sustainable use of resources. I will only present our recommendations from our region. Firstly, we consider it to be important to develop an indicator to evaluate biodiversity of soils at the international level, as well as to improve monitoring of sus soil uh, sustainable use at a regional level by fostering interaction between governments and research organizations. Secondly, we propose creating an international initiative on conservation and sustainable use of uh, of uh, the use of biodiversity uh, of indigenous varieties of plants and animals used in agriculture and in the production of food. Also, thirdly, we propose strengthening uh, scientific and technical assistance through CBD by encouraging the strengthening of local communities in order to develop innovative methods for agriculture. as well as uh, plantations of a community level, which are able to provide ecosystem services in order to preserve and sustainably use pollinators in order to uh, combat climate change and in order to improve the state of soils and water as well as providing subsistence uh, to local populations. In this fashion, in conclusion, the CEE proposes focusing on the issues of biodiversity in forestry and in agriculture in order to mitigate the consequences of climate change, and in order to improve the state of our lands. Thank you. Thank you, Moldova. Um, now I give the mic to Ghana for the regional presentation intervention. Ghana, you have the floor. Okay, I see um, Ghana is having some problems with the mic. So now I open the floor for intervention from parties. If you wish to speak, please press the raise your hands button on the screen, which will turn yellow. Your request will be entered into the queue list. When I give you the floor, your microphone will be activated and the status bar will turn red on your computer and you may start speaking immediately. <clears throat> okay, so I now realize Ghana is back. So Ghana, you have the floor. Please take the floor, Ghana. Uh, 
attention to the record. Okay, so we having Ghana seems to be having some technical um, issues, and now we open the floor for intervention from parties, and we will take intervention from. Adams and the users, you will see the list. So it's Germany followed by France and Argentina. So now I give the floor to Germany followed by France and Argentina. Germany, you have the floor. Please take the floor, Germany. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We would like to thank the Secretariat for preparing the information compiled in document CBD Substa 24-7 and its addenda. We welcome the work done by the FIO in preparing the report State of Knowledge of Soil Biodiversity, Status, Challenges and Potentialities. This report serves as valuable background for the work of Substar and CBD COP. The report raises global attention for the importance of soil biodiversity and its related ecosystem services a topic that literally was buried underground but now comes into global focus. We would like to strengthen the importance of ecosystem services provided by an active and diverse life in soils for the fulfillment of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. We acknowledge the work of the International Initiative for the Conservation and Sustainable Use of Soil Biodiversity in preparing a draft plan of action 2020 to 2030. We welcome this plan of action as an important element for the conservation, restoration and sustainable use of soil biodiversity and recommend its adoption with minor changes. In order to reflect some minor changes, we will hand in some concrete proposals to the draft recommendations and draft plan of action in writing. Thank you very much, Germany. Oh, sorry, I'm not done. As above and below ground biodiversity are strongly intervened, and their conservation should be approached in a holistic way. We recommend to the open-ended working group to consider the importance of soil biodiversity and the ecosystem services it provides, both for enhancing sustainable use and the conservation and restoration of ecosystems when developing the post-2020 GBF. Soil biodiversity and its relations and correlations with above-ground biodiversity should be adequately reflected in the monitoring framework. To conclude, the FAO report underlines the value of soil biodiversity and how essential its related ecosystem services are for all life on Earth, especially our own. The draft plan of action shows a way to conserve soil biodiversity and safeguards its sustainable use in the long term. It is therefore well in line with the findings of FAO's The State of the World's Biodiversity for Food and Agriculture and the development of a global plan of action under FAO's Commission on Genetic Resources. This, this will address soil microorganisms and invertebrates and their ecosystem services in agricultural production systems. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Germany. Now I give the floor to France, followed by Argentina and, and um, the Netherlands. France, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Chair, the Action Plan 2020 to 2030 of the International Initiative for the conservation and sustainable use of soil biodiversity is an excellent basis from which to work. Along with the concepts of conservation and sustainable use of soil biodiversity, France recommends also mentioning the importance of soil restoration. France recommends taking soil diversity into greater account in the post-2020 global biodiversity framework by adding to Substa's draft recommendation a paragraph 2 bis intended for the open-ended working group. France also recommends that the framework emphasize sustainable agricultural practices, in particular agroecology and sustainable landscape man management. 
The framework should also allow for an increased recognition of the role and knowledge of Indigenous peoples and local communities, notably for soil biodiversity protection as is highlighted by the IPBES Global Assessment Report on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services. In order for soil biodiversity to be fully integrated, the process of transition should to more sustainable agriculture must be supported by incentives and regulations. The risks associated with this transition must also be reduced. France recommends amending paragraphs 4 and 5 as a result. Conservation, restoration, and sustainable use of soil biodiversity form a basis for sustainable agriculture. They are central to a more global transformation of food systems. The United, United Nations Food Systems Summit planned for 2021 will also contribute strategically to defining the new global biodiversity framework. In order to reflect the multitude of issues linked to soil biodiversity, the need for an integrated approach among the various actors and the building of consensus both for the goals and for the approaches, France proposes adding a paragraph 7 bis inviting UNEP, FAO, the UN Convention to Combat Desertification, the Intergovernmental Technical Panel on Soils, and the International Initiative for Soil Biodiversity to support the implementation of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. In paragraph 10, we recommend expanding the list of bodies to whose attention the recommendation will be brought by adding the UNFCCC, other organizations, programs, and conventions of the United Nations relating to biodiversity, as well as the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration. I thank you very much. Now I give the floor to Argentina, followed by Netherlands and Chile. Argentina, you have the floor. Please take the floor. Gracias, señor presidente. Chair, this statement is provisional and informal in nature. The relationship between biodiversity and agriculture is of central importance for Argentina. It's a country that produces food for the world and therefore increasing the production of agri-systems sustainably is a priority for us. Argentina is a country leader when it comes to developing innovative practices for the conservation and sustainable use of soil. For example, we have broadly implemented a no-till system in combination with crop rotation, thereby increasing the productivity and the sustainable management of soil. And we are number two in the world when it comes to the most surface area that has been certified as organic farming. So Argentina is working actively on mainstreaming the biodiversity into agriculture. So we've recently adopted the programme to promote the conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity in agri-ecosystems. This programme is based on the objectives of the NBSAP and shows the importance of promoting diverse agricultural practices. Moreover, in 2020, Argentina set its land degradation neutrality targets that it's already passed on to the global mechanism of the Convention to Combat Desertification, and our national action plan is aligned with the Agenda 2030. Given the many uh, strategies for conservation sustainable use of soil biodiversity which Argentina has committed, we've taken note of the documents under discussion the annexes, and we think that it's important to have a flexible approach. We've underlined that there's no one size that fits all. And so we need to enrich both annexes to reflect the diversity of agricultural systems and sustainable practices that exist in different countries and regions. It is a cause for concern that if we don't reflect the multiplicity of existing practices, certain affirmations in the document could become obstacles to international trade, lead to loss of productivity and be a consequent threat to food security as well as focusing international cooperation funds on the basis of priorities that are not in keeping with the approaches pursued by the beneficiary countries of these funds. Finally, we want to say that we view positively many of the proposals in the document. Notwithstanding, as has happened with other initiatives that have been promoted in the CBD, we run the risk of creating expectations that we won't be able to fulfil due to a lack of resources. 
Given this, Argentina wishes to underline its commitment to South-South cooperation and triangular cooperation on this topic. We call on developed countries in line with Article 20 of the Convention and SDG 17 to contribute with the necessary financial resources to cover the additional costs of implementing the Plan of Action once adopted. Chairman, to conclude, we wish to reiterate the relevance of this discussion point and Argentina's will to continue to participate in the future work. Thank you. Very much, Argentina. Now I give the floor to Netherlands, followed by Chile and Portugal. Netherlands, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There can be no life without soil and no soil without life. We are the Dutch youth representatives on biodiversity and we're happy to see soil quality on the subsets agenda. It's a topic important to you as leaders, policymakers, and civil societies, but it's especially so for us, the youth. We are the farmers and the plant breeders of the future, but also the generation that simply wants to remain able to feed the global population. And we're alarmed by the emerging uncertainty of this basic need. Senior UN official Maria Helena Semedo has warned that soils around the world are heading for exhaustion and depletion, with an, estimated, uh, with an estimated 60 harvests left before they are too barren to feed the planet. This means that our soil has an expiration date. What happens afterwards? This makes us uneasy as we are the ones that will have to deal with this expiration date. And this also applies to future generations. The substance should send a strong message to COP15 about stepping up efforts and implementation to address soil biodiversity loss. In addition, however important soil quality may be, we must not forget other aspects of agriculture. The global biodiversity framework should reflect agriculture as a root cause of biodiversity loss. It should have clear and impactful targets such as promoting and subsidizing research into sustainable agricultural management. This will pave the way for development of sustainable systems and land research management. Both should be integrated in the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. Either through a dedicated specific target or via sub-targets or monitoring elements. We hear about the opportunities in agriculture that allow a synergy between agriculture and biodiversity, thereby improving productivity and the ecosystem's functions. We spoke to young farmers that want to make a change towards more nature-inclusive farms, but they need governmental support grounded in international policies and guidance, such as subsidies and taxes, that encourage sustainable soil management. Lastly, we would like to let you know that regardless of our concerns, we're hopeful too. We see the innovations and we learn from indigenous knowledge. And we hope you share our optimism as optimism is essential to change. Thank you. Thank you very much, Netherlands. Now we give, I give the floor to Chile, followed by Portugal and Japan. Chile, you have the floor. Please take the floor. On this agenda item, we wish to make specific comments on the Draft Plan of Action 2020-2030 of the International Initiative for Conservation and Sustainable Use of Soil Biodiversity. We consider that the proposed Plan of Action is pertinent and its implementation will allow us to make progress with protection and conservation of soil biodiversity. We highlight that it's consistent with the debates on this subject in other international fora, especially in the Global Soil Partnership. While we highlight the opportunity offered to us by the proposed Plan of Action to contribute to the protection and conservation of soil biodiversity, we must also take note of the significant challenge that this will imply for effective implementation in developing countries and economies in transition. We note with concern the marked focus on the agroforestry sector and its actors. It only opens itself up to other sectors on specific points and does not express measures to conserve soil biota in these other sectors. This renders invisible other actors, such as territorial administrators of urban and peri-urban zones, or those who are responsible for managed areas such as forests or wetlands with no uh, farming purpose. This could limit the scope and effectiveness of the plan. 
Also, our country has identified two weaknesses with the proposed plan that would make it difficult for us to accept it if these weaknesses are maintained. Firstly, we think that it does not appropriately address the need to mobilise financial resources for proper implementation, especially for developing countries and economies in transition. Secondly, in the Plan of Action, it only recommends the use of organic fertilisers and reduced use of agrochemical products without considering the initial level use of these. And it indicates that generic herbicides cause accumulation of toxic residues. Chile believes that the plan, in parallel with promoting use of organic fertilisers, should be geared towards ensuring that agrochemicals are used appropriately in line with the instructions on the label and complemented by education establishments and inspections. This practice should be applied to all of the inputs that are used for productive activities. Chair, these are our main comments on this topic. And at the appropriate moment in time, we will hand in all the details, suggestions and relevant proposals. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chile. Now I give the floor to Portugal, followed by Japan and Colombia. Portugal, you have the floor. Please take the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Distinguished delegates, Portugal wishes to thank the Secretariat and the Substance Chair for organizing this virtual meeting, which provides a good opportunity to keep our process ongoing as we consider enhanced communication and cooperation to be important for the development of an effective and successful framework. We also express recognition for the preparation of the document CBD Substa 24-7-Rev1, noting its good quality and its different sources and references. We all understand the crucial role of soil biodiversity for life on Earth. Therefore, Portugal appreciates the high quality of FAO report state of knowledge for soil biodiversity, status, challenges and potentialities, and its valuable contributions to improve the knowledge on soil biodiversity as well as its conservation and sustainability. Together with the latest, the 2020-2030 draft plan of action for the International Initiative for the Conservation and Sustainable Use of Soil Biodiversity is of utmost importance and serves as an excellent input for the post-2020 GBF and to our road to Kunming. Acknowledging the critical importance of soil biodiversity and the values delivered by ecosystems to resilient and sustainable food systems that provide healthy and nutritious diets to a growing world population, along with climate stability and ecosystem resilience, Portugal welcomes the report and plan of action 2020-2030 for the International Initiative for the Conservation and Sustainable Use of Soil Biodiversity and feels that it should also specifically address soil biodiversity restoration recommends that conservation, restoration and sustainable use of soil biodiversity, the development of sustainable agriculture systems and land resource management practice should be fully integrated into the post-2020 GBF, either through a dedicated specific target or via sub-targets or monitoring elements. Also welcomes the work of the International Initiative for the Conservation and Sustainable Use of Soil Biodiversity, FAO and other related organizations, as well as the work of the UNCCD on land degradation neutrality and, its, and is on the view that the work needs to continue in collaboration with the UNEP, IPBES and further relevant organizations. Mr. Chair, to conclude, emphasizing the interlinkage between soil biodiversity and human health, Portugal encouraged SUBSTA to send a strong message to the COP15 concerning the urgency to set, step up efforts to address soil biodiversity loss in an integrated and mutually supportive manner at all levels of society and governments, and to implement the necessary actions in support of sustainable development. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Portugal. Now I give the floor to Japan, followed by Colombia and Morocco. Japan, you have the floor. Please take the floor. Thank you, Chair Pesson, for the opportunity to speak on this issue. I'd like to thank the Secretariat to prepare the document on this agenda, and I'd like to explain the position of the government of Japan um, on the draft recommendation on agenda item 7, biodiversity and agriculture. In Japan, sustainable agriculture that adapts to society and its environment is being promoted. Some areas of Japan have, recognized, have been listed as World Agriculture Heritage Sites 
for the unique traditional agriculture that is adapted to road conditions. Japan has confirmed that the important issues in the draft plan of action have been incorporated into its policies, and the draft plan of action should be appropriately implemented in each country according, according to its situation. But based on this understanding, the government of Japan supports the draft recommendation, which encourages parties to support the implementation of the plan of action. The government of Japan believes that it is important to continue to ensure that countries implement and provide information on the draft plan of action in a manner appropriate to their own circumstances. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Japan. Now I give the floor to Colombia, followed by Morocco and Belgium. Colombia, you have the floor. Please take the floor. Thank you, Chair. In general terms, we support the adoption of the Draft Plan of Action 2020-2030 of the International Initiative for the Conservation and Sustainable Use of Soil Biodiversity. This plan is strategic to strengthen the mainstreaming of soil biodiversity in productive sectors, as well as to promote synergies during implementation with the Paris Agreement, the UNCCD commitments, and the SDGs. The proposed plan is also a tool to address under the GBF the major biodiversity loss drivers identified by the IPBES. It is also a key tool in the transition to sustainable agriculture as described in the fifth edition of the Global Biodiversity Outlook. The plan can be useful in addressing key issues related to sustainable production and consumption patterns, such as deforestation reduction, restoration, a more efficient use of fertilizers, sustainable livestock soils, land tenure and food security, among other priorities. We are also pleased to see that the plan includes the One Health approach. It is also an opportunity to strengthen the view of soils as a nature-based solution to address different social challenges, such as access to healthy and diversified diets, through sustainable agricultural production systems, as well as mitigation and adaptation to climate change, including by safeguarding traditional knowledge associated with soil conservation and sustainable use. Although the draft plan of action is an excellent basis, we consider that some aspects need to be strengthened. Paragraph 18 of the plan indicates that FAO will provide support for its implementation. However, the type of support that may be offered to parties is not specified. In this sense, it is suggested to include more information in this regard. For example, FAO support could be key to achieve greater co-responsibility and ownership by the agriculture sector in the implementation of the plan. Also, we consider that aspects related to the means of implementation can be further developed such as addressing negative in incentives for the expansion of the agricultural frontier and their elimination or reform towards the promotion of positive incentives for sustainable soil management. Another issue that could be strengthened is capacity building in developing countries for research and technology transfer. Finally, we will submit written comments with proposals for the draft recommendation referring to fostering synergies with climate change and promoting resource mobilization from the private sector. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now I give the floor to Morocco, followed by Belgium, and then we will give the floor back to the African region who will be represented by Seychelles. Morocco, you have the floor. Uh, merci, Monsieur Président. Chair, Morocco congratulates the Secretariat on document substitute 24 slash 7 slash Rev 1 with its summary for policymakers and the updated plan of action of the International Initiative for the Conservation and Sustainable Use of Soil Biodiversity. We would also like to thank FAO and the partners that contributed to the excellent report on the state of knowledge on soil biodiversity presented in 
subs to 24 infate. Going forward, this is a reference document on soil biodiversity across all regions of the world with updated research findings on soil biota and their functions and ecosystem services. Morocco supports the intervention made on behalf of Africa and underscores the importance of mitigating the direct and indirect impacts of human activities on soil biodiversity on, on multiple ecosystem services. Soil biodiversity plays a fundamental role and its contribution to sustainable development and therefore to the realization of the post-22 uh, biodiversity framework is undeniable. This role is particularly clear in the areas of food security and sustainable agriculture, water quality, health, and climate action. By maintaining and enriching soil biodiversity through use of sustainable practices, farmers could bring significant benefits to food and water security, as well as to mitigation and adaptation to climate change. The Kingdom of Morocco insists on the need for effective integration of the basic elements of the updated plan of action of the international initiative in the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. In fact, we note this integration could be improved even more in the current version of the framework. and that is in the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework. Finally, Morocco considers it necessary to continue to fill in the gaps identified in the Plan of Action on Soil Biodiversity. It is important to transmit to policymakers the message of the importance of soil biodiversity while encouraging them to guide and support national research with a view to produce more information and quantitative data on soil biodiversity and the ecosystem services it provides. Capacity building and research networking initiatives are desirable at this level with the support of donors and funding bodies. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Morocco. Now I give the floor to Belgium, followed by Seychelles and Switzerland. Belgium, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Belgium wishes to thank the Executive Secretary for preparing the documents on soil biodiversity. We recognize the major role that soil, of soil biodiversity in the complexity of physical and biochemical processes that support the ecosystem services pro provided by the soil. We recognize that during recent decades, soil biodiversity is affected by a number of new challenges such as climate change, urbanization, and intensification of agricultural practices. Conversely, soil biodiversity itself can have a positive influence on the mitigation of the consequences of these challenges. As soil organic carbon plays an important role in most of the soil biological, physical and chemical processes, monitoring of soil organic carbon content and initiatives to enhance the amount of soil organic carbon where needed or protect essential soil organic carbon stocks should therefore be encouraged. Belgium wishes to remark that not only agriculture, but all managed ecosystems should be considered in the scope of the action plan. Little is as yet known about the actual extent and impact of the biodiversity in the world's soils, so further scientific research and monitoring is needed to address the lack of information. Because of the complexity of soil biodiversity, focused attention is needed not to oversimplify the soil biological processes, but to consider all factors that have an impact on it. And finally, Mr. Chair, please note that the views expressed here are provisional and Belgium reserve the right to adapt them. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Belgium. Now I give the floor to Seychelles followed by Switzerland and the UK, the Seychelles, you have the floor. Please take the floor. Thank you, Chair. Seychelles speaks on behalf of the African group. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for the opportunity to express Africa's views on the subjects of biodiversity and agriculture. We recognize the views of other presenters and reiterate that the contribution of biodiversity to food raw materials for goods such as cotton and wool for clothing, wood for shelter and fuel, plants and roots for medicines and materials for biofuels are well appreciated by the region. 
again, biodiversity's contribution to ecosystem services such as soil and water, conservation, maintenance of soil fertility, conservation of biota, and pollination of plants are appreciated by the region because they are essential for food production and human survival. In view of these, the African region envisages modern agriculture for increased production and value addition, contributing to farmer and national prosperity and Africa's collective food security. Again, Africa's unique natural endowments, its environment and ecosystems, including its wildlife and wildlands, are healthy, valued, and protected with climate resilient economies and communities. With these biological systems functioning properly, it is envisaged that by 2063, African countries will be among the best performers in global quality of life measures. This will be attained through strategies of inclusive growth, job creation, increasing agricultural production, investments in science, technology, research and innovation, gender equality, youth empowerment, and the provision of basic services, including health, nutrition, education, shelter, water, and sanitation. Africa's agriculture will be modern and productive using science, technology, innovation, and indigenous knowledge, making it profitable and attractive to the continent's youth and women. Mr. Chairman, to consolidate the modernization of African agriculture and agribusinesses based on biodiversity through scaled up value addition and productivity, we want to completely eliminate hunger and food insecurity reduce the imports of food and raise intra-Africa trade in agriculture and food to 50% of total formal food and agricultural trade. We want to expand the introduction of modern agricultural systems, technologies, and training, including the banishment of the handhold. Africa will develop and implement affirmative policies and advocacy to ensure women's increased access to land and inputs and ensure that at least 30% of agricultural financing are accessed by women. We will economically empower women and youth by en enhancing access to financial resources for investment. In view of these, Mr. Chairman, Africa considers the recommendations in the document CBD Substar 247 Rev 1 on the review of the International Initiative for the Conservation and Sustainable Use of Soil Biodiversity and Updated Plan of Action produced by the FAO. Again, for Af Africa's position to effectively cover the subject matter, we consider the recommendations from previous conference of parties and policy documents from the Intergovernmental Panel on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services on pollinators. Mr. Chairman, we recall the agenda on ecosystem restoration in Africa that was approved by the African Ministers of Environment during COP14 in Sharm El Sheikh in 2018 and the program of work on agriculture and land degradation in Africa. These we will reflect in our contributions to the discourse on the subject matter, which we hope for a fruitful discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Cecils. Now I give the floor to Switzerland, followed by UK and Thailand. Switzerland, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Distinguished colleagues, Switzerland welcomes the review of the International Initiative on Soil Biodiversity, as well as the publication of the first state of knowledge of soil biodiversity at the occasion of the World Soil Day 2020, and would like to thank FAO and the Global Soil Partnership for their leadership in the implementation of the International Initiative and for the preparation of the updated Plan of Action 2020-2030. Conservation and sustainable use of soil biodiversity are particularly important to ensure soil fertility and therefore transformation of agriculture and food systems towards more sustainability and resilience to enhance the achievement of the sustainable development goals. So far, there has no specific reference to soil in the goals and targets of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework and its monitoring framework. Switzerland therefore suggests that SUBSTA strongly recommends to the open-ended working group to consider integrating specific reference to soil in existing targets 
such as, for example, in the target related to sustainable use and in the associated headline indicators. Finally, Mr. Chair, Switzerland encourages strengthened collaboration and cooperation with the UN Convention to Combat Desertification, especially its science policy interface and the UNCCD 2018 to 2030 strategic framework. Mr. Chair, we will submit these and additional proposed changes to the draft position and to the updated plan of action in writing at the upcoming formal SUBSTA meeting. I thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Switzerland. Now I give the floor to the UK, followed by Thailand and Spain. The UK, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The UK government recognizes that soil is one of our greatest assets and it provides a range of benefits and functions essential for society, including food production, biodiversity, carbon sequestration and storage and flood mitigation. The ability of soil to perform these functions is reduced when it's degraded or eroded, that is when its quality or quantity are reduced. Amongst other actions in the UK, the 25-year Environment Plan for England sets out the government's admission to replenish depleted soils and restore their fertility so that soils are managed sustainably by 2030. We consider soil biodiversity as one of the key indicators of soil health, and it will be part of the foundation of our future soil health indicator work. Accordingly, we support the draft recommendations from SUBSTA to the Conference of the Parties, albeit with some minor amendments, for example, to next consider the issue again before the 17th, not the 16th Conference of the Parties, to give parties time to make progress on actions and to account for the long time scales required for improvements in soil health. We also support the draft plan of action in Annex 2, but again with minor amendments to emphasize, amongst other things, the importance of soils as a carbon store, as well as their importance for carbon sequestration. Finally, it is essential that considerations relating to soil biodiversity are addressed in the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. We suggest some changes to the SUBSTA recommendation to ask the open-ended working group to take into account when developing the post-2020 global biodiversity framework, the importance of soil biodiversity for enhancing the conservation and sustainable use of ecosystems and the benefits they provide. We will provide our comments and suggested amendments in writing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, UK, for your succinct presentation. Now I give the floor to Thailand, followed by Spain and the European Union. Um, Thailand, you have the floor. Thailand welcomes the report on state of knowledge on soil biodiversity prepared by the FAO. Uh, as well as the draft plan of action 2020 to 2030 for the international initiative for the conservation and sustainable use of soil biodiversity. Thailand supports ecosystem-based approaches that conserve, restore, and avoid degradation of soil biodiversity to agricultural activities. We encourage the CBD party to integrate sustainable agricultural practice into NBSAP and national agricultural strategies according to their national circumstance. Thailand concerns issues regarding agricultural waste seen in appropriate waste management from agricultural cause negative impacts on soil biodiversity and climate change. Regarding to Annex 2 draft plan of action in this document, Thailand recommends to add agricultural waste management and appropriate use of fertilizer to control pests in element 2 on implementing sustainable soil management practice. Now, Thailand will deliver statement of the agenda item on behalf of the ASEAN member states. ASEAN support to the adoption of the draft plan of action 2020 to 2030 for the international initiative for the conservation and sustainable use of soil biodiversity and consider it's a means to support the implementation of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. It is also recommended 
the plan of action prioritize support to developing country parties, such as some country in the ASEAN region. In element four of the plan of action on research, monitoring, and assessment to be prioritized, particularly funding support and capacity building through development cooperation programs. The ASEAN region is one of the view that assessing and monitoring the status and trends of soil biodiversity is particularly important so as to inform adaptive management and to guarantee the functioning of all terrestrial ecosystems, including the long-term productivity of agricultural soil. Moreover, a comprehensive status of soil biodiversity will facilitate facilitate mainstreaming and cross-sectoral collaboration among agriculture, forestry, and environment agencies to achieve common goals on food security. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Thailand. Now I give the floor to Spain, followed by the European Union and Cameroon. Spain, you have the floor. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Thank you, Chair. Spain recognizes the importance of soil biodiversity in underpinning the functioning of terrestrial ecosystems, and it is essential for most of the services that these ecosystems provide, including carbon sequestration and storage, water purification and the fertility the soil provides. Therefore, we believe that Substa should include in its recommendation a reference whereby the Working Group on the Post-2020 Framework should consider the importance of soil biodiversity and the ecosystem services that it provides when drafting the new Global Biodiversity Framework. Spain also supports COP's adoption of the Plan of Action 2020-2030 for the International Initiative for the Conservation and Sustainable Use of Soil Biodiversity, including certain changes to enhance it, such as, first of all, when addressing loss of soil biodiversity, as well as taking into account agriculture other sectors should be taken into account, in particular infrastructure, mining, the energy sector or spatial planning. Secondly, in general, when referring to conservation and sustainable use of soil biodiversity, we should add its restoration so that we can have a proactive approach to recuperate degraded soil. Thirdly, as regards invasive alien species, which pose a direct or indirect risk to soil biodiversity, as well as preventing their introduction into the environment, we also have to add a reference to eradicate these or control and manage these invasive alien species. We also think we have to include new references to promote research to quantify and qualify soil biodiversity in agriculture and in other managed ecosystems. Finally, it would also be appropriate to include new references to promote research on soil management practices that ensure the conservation, restoration and sustainable use of soil biodiversity. Thank you very much, Chair. Now I give the floor to European Union, followed by Cameroon and Belarus. European, you have, European Union, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, good afternoon, everybody. So the EU support the statements made previously by Portugal that healthy soils and soil biodiversity are crucial for the fight against climate change, the protection of human health and ecosystems, and for ensuring food security. However, in recent decades, intensive land management and land use change have severely impacted soil biodiversity. The EU supports the draft recommendations and plan of action and proposed strengthening the latter in particular as regards the following. One, first, the plan of action should be stronger on improving policy coherence and mainstreaming, namely by mainstreaming the conservation, restoration and sustainable use and management of soil biodiversity into the agricultural forestry, but also within other sectors, especially infrastructure, mining, energy and transport. Second, the plan of action should recall the importance to promote 
spatial planning, and other approaches to reduce the loss of soil surface and biodiversity because of soil sealing. Third, the plan of action should encourage more explicitly the use of sustainable soil management practices into land policies to safeguard ecosystem services provided by soil, in particular by focusing on actions and levers that can lead to the transition to sustainable patterns of production and consumption. In this respect, it's clear that promotion of agroecology or other biodiversity friendly practices, including organic farming, agroforestry, multi cropping, and crop rotation that enhance soil fertility, reduce erosion, and increase soil organic matter can create the transformation change we need. At the same time, minimizing the use of organic fertilizers and reducing the use of pesticides will restore degraded soils, increase landscape landscape connectivity and restore production areas. We will submit our proposed amendments to the recommendation in writing and ask to make them accessible on the web page. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, European Union. Now I give the floor to Cameroon, followed by Belarus and Brazil. Cameroon, you have the floor. Cameroon, you have the floor. Please take the floor. Okay. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Cameroon would like to support the comments made on behalf of the I'm sorry that there's no sound. Go. Um, it is recognized that 80% of populations in extreme poverty live in rural zones and that many of them practice agriculture. In this respect, in agriculture, Cameroon supports an approach that allows not only to ensure economic profitability, The sound has disappeared. The camera is back. Okay. Ek, oh la la. The connection is not uh, quite good. I don't know exactly. La connection n'est pas très bonne. The uh, connection is is poor. Can can you follow what I'm saying? This is with Cameroon. So I will um, now give the floor to Belarus, followed by Brazil and Finland. Belarus, you have the floor. Please take the floor. Mm -hmm. um, hello, ladies and gentlemen. The Republic of Belarus expresses its, its deep gratitude to the Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity for organizing, facilitating, and supporting the effective work of all the groups and initiatives. Taking into account the specific of substar activities, Belarus considers it necessary to emphasize the close relationship between biological diversity and food security, particular importance of preserving the gene pool of animals, plants, and microorganisms uh, used in agriculture. At that, it should be noted that with all the measures taken for the conservation of biological diversity and the most pro productive genetic resources, local animal breeds and all the local uh, plant varieties traditionally used in the countries of their habitat have acquired particular importance in the current change in climate, and they are on the verge of extinction in many countries due to the imports of foreign breeds and plant varieties. 
Thus, for example, in the conditions of agricultural intensification in Belarus, many local animal breeds and old local plant varieties are on the verge of extinction as they could not withstand competition with the breeds, breeds used in agro-industrial complexes. Uh, our, um, our colleagues from Tajikistan and uh, some other countries of the region also told us about the similar situation and that these particular local breeds have genotypes that ensure, ensure their vitality and high adaptive potential in the face of climate change. And the similar picture is observed in case of old local plant varieties. Belarus, Belarus can, you, can you please sit on qualities of the interpreter to help yeah, them with the okay. Thank you. Belarus calls for the strongest, strongest cooperation of the Convention on Biological Diversity with FAO and other international and national organizations and local communities in order to prevent the disappearance of the valuable gene pool of local animals and plants taking place right before our very eyes. We call for the establishment of an international initiative for conservation and sustainable use of the aboriginal animals and plants traditionally used in agriculture and other industries and add uh, this goal to the post-2020 global framework on bio biological diversity. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Belarus. I just before I proceed to the next speaker, I wish to appeal to speakers to please slow down so that you can help the interpreters who are doing a fantastic job. Now I give the floor to Brazil, followed by Finland and Australia. Brazil, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I hope you can all hear me. Uh, this, is a, as this is an informal session. I'll make some preliminary comments on the proposed action plan for Internet for the International Initiative for the Conservation and Sustainable Use of Soil Biodiversity. The final position will be presented in the formal face-to-face -face meeting. Brazil attaches great value on work dedicated to conservation and sustainable use of soils. Under the initiative's program, our Brazilian Agriculture Research Cooperation, EMBRAPA, hosted together with FAO a workshop on biological management of soil ecosystems for sustainable agriculture. Knowledge regarding the state of the country's soil is key to promoting its sustainable use, as well as designing conservation and restoration policies more in line with the reality in the field. This is the logic behind the recently launched Brazilian soil program known as PRONASOLUS, which, which goal is to map the country's soils. Our national policy on payments for environmental services also includes several initiatives aiming at restoring soil's biological diversity. With regard to the action plan, we believe that priority should be given to promoting policies and technologies that would enable parties to improve their mapping cap capabilities in detailed scales, acknowledging differences in management of tropical soils and those present in more temperate regions. Once we've completed this exercise, we would be better placed to recommend sustainable practices in soil management that are science-based and tailored to addressing the specific realities in the field according to each biome. The current gaps in data on soil biodiversity in some parts of the planet might render premature actions related to indicators, as stated in paragraph 19E. The action plan should also address commitments related to access and benefit sharing. For example, when proposing actions related to data collection and the use of traditional knowledge on soil biodiversity and management, the document should ensure that parties will uphold CBD's commitment on fair and equitable benefit sharing with the com country or community of origin of that particular resource. It should also, when necessary, de demonstrate that prior informed consent was obtained. In view of this consideration, Brazil considers that the action plan needs improving before we are able to endorse it. Further comments will be presented in written form in due course. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Brazil. Now I give the floor to Finland, followed by Australia and Cameroon. Finland, you have the floor. Chair Adams, soil biodiversity is key for nature and biodiversity. We would like to underline the need to adapt 
the plan of action from 2020 to 2030 for the conservation and sustainable use of soil biodiversity that still needs some amendments, but that we support. The conservation and sustainable use of soil biodiversity maintain important ecosystem services. Soil biodiversity is a key element for people, essential for food production, health, security, uh, and climate change and uh, climate change mitigation and adaptation. Soil biodiversity, one health and human health are interlinked. This requires strengthening of the environmental dimension and the one health approach for integrating the SDGs, the work of UNEP with the existing work of FAO, OA, OAI, WHO and IPES, which should be reflected in the recommendation. Soil biodiversity is essential for the implementation of the CBD and many sustainable development goals, including those related to poverty eradication, equity, food security, climate change and restoration. We need to continue the dialogue between different sectors at all levels, such as agriculture, fisheries, urban and rural areas, including land use change and trade. There is a need to strengthen soil monitoring capacities and development of indicators for soil biodiversity. We also note the importance of forests, watershed areas, lakes and rivers for functioning of terrestrial ecosystems. Soil biodiversity is part of a sustainable management and use of natural resources. For soil quality and biodiversity, the use of pesticides needs attention. Finally, monitoring of soils has produced excellent information of soil quality and its changes in recent decades in Finland. Projects have been targeted to understand the effects of agriculture feed management to soil biodiversity. Finland is willing to share its expertise and research in the field, and we would like to submit the information to the CBD Secretariat. Chair, we align ourselves with the intervention made by Portugal and others. We will submit our amendments to the draft recommendation in writing to the Secretariat. Thank you. Thank you very much, Finland. Now I give the floor to Australia, followed by Cameroon and Mexico. Um, Australia, you have the floor. Australia would like to thank the Executive Secretariat, the FAO, and the Secretariat of the Global Soil Partnerships for the work they have undertaken in the preparation of the meeting papers. Australia recognises the fundamental role soil plays in the carbon cycle and water cycle, as well as being the engine room of food production and host to extraordinary biodiversity. As such, the Australian Government is developing the National Soil Strategy. This will guide our governments and other stakeholders to undertake practical actions to understand and better manage the condition of Australian soils. Australia believes it is important that the work of the, under the International Initiative for the conservation and sustainable use of soil biodiversity should be implemented uh, with uh, industry, relevant organizations and initiatives, indigenous peoples and local communities and state and territory or municipal governments in order to achieve the best outcomes. As such, Australia is supportive of the development of the updated plan of action and sees the four elements as well placed to bring all stakeholders along on the journey of the along on the journey of the conservation and sustainable use of soil. Australia notes that activities in the plan of action are intended to be voluntary and is strongly supportive of that to ensure that parties can implement them according to their national circumstances. We look forward to further discussions on this work. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Australia. Now, due to time constraint, we will take the last two um, countries on the list, um, parties on the list. So now I give the floor to Cameroon, followed by Mexico. Cameroon, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. J'espère que I hope that it will be better this time. 
Cameroon supports the comments made on behalf of the African region by Seychelles. It is recognized that 80% of populations in extreme poverty live in rural zones and that many of them practice agriculture. In this respect, in agriculture, Cameroon supports an approach that allows not only to ensure economic profitability, leading to a reduction in operating costs, to producer autonomy, to better resilience and better risk management, but also an approach that permits a response to major crucial environmental challenges, such as biodiversity decline, climate change, and sustainable soil and water management. This approach could take the form of promoting adoption of sustainable agricultural practices while highlighting the importance of traditional knowledge on soil management and capacity building for a better knowledge of soil, of best cultivation practices, and of available technologies. Cameroon encourages the limitation of synthetic fertilizers in light of production costs and greenhouse gas emissions. Moreover, we believe it important to perform a risk assessment of recycled fertilizers in order to ensure that they are not harmful to soil biodiversity. Consideration should be given to the content of undesirable elements in recycled fertilizers and to their use in such a way as to avoid emissions into the water and the air. Cameroon supports the arguments in favor of integrating soil biodiversity into the sustainable development agenda in the post-2020 global biodiversity framework in the UN decade on ecosystem restoration and in all areas where soil biodiversity can contribute. In addition, we support the establishment of protocols and standard procedures for assessing soil biodiversity at various levels. For this purpose, Cameroon has familiarized itself with Section 3 of CBD slash substance slash 24 slash 7 slash Rev 1, which presents the suggested recommendations. We believe that the updated plan of action should not just be considered a means of supporting the implementation of the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework, but it should be seen more as a tool for the new global framework. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Cameroon. Now I give the floor to the final um, party for today. Um, now, Mexico, you have the floor. Please take the floor, Mexico. Mexico welcomes and thanks the FAO for the important work that it's accomplished when coordinating and drafting the report on the state of knowledge of soil biodiversity. This publication offers an excellent panoramic view of the current uh, status and also clearly indicates the gaps, obstacles and opportunities to be addressed both at a national and global level. In order to offer a complete overview, we recommend also highlighting the role played by soils in coastal and wetland ecosystems. On the other hand, we welcome the updating of the International Initiative for the Conservation and Sustainable Use of Soil Biodiversity and also its plan of action. Mexico is in favour of its approval. However, we wish to point out the importance of continuing to work on the following actions. First of all, to include incentives and stimulus measures for basic and applied research in national legislation, as well as in programmes geared towards the important role of bio soil biodiversity to uh, strengthen the decision makers and the general public's knowledge of this subject. Then secondly, to continue and improve data collection with respect to the abundance and diversity of taxa and the interactions between them. Thirdly, to make progress in producing a global soil biodiversity assessment with indicators related to the provision of ecosystem services, 
strengthening the governance of the actions by integrating different actors, including local actors and their knowledge. Also, to promote this subject within the context of the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration, to foster the use of sustainable management practices and sustainable use of soils involving farmers, ranchers, indigenous peoples and local communities. Also to recommend that we emphasise that there are other anthropogenic activities beyond agricultural use such as mining, erosion through deforestation and the introduction of invasive alien species which also have negative impacts on soil. Finally, we welcome the organisation of the Global Symposium on Soil Biodiversity to be held between the 19th and 22nd of April where Mexico will present its state of knowledge on soil biodiversity in our country as well as two cases related to agricultural soil. Thank you, Chair. Mexico, this will be the last presentation for today. On my list, we'll continue tomorrow with New Zealand, followed by Democratic Republic of Congo, Russian Federation, Peru, Austria, Indonesia, Italy, um, Jordan, Ghana, China, and Georgia. Now I give the floor to the chair um, who will make an announcement um, before we close the day. Um, chair, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Alan, for your excellent conduction of business. Dear colleagues, I do appreciate your efforts today to make progress timely. Unfortunately, we're still way behind the schedule and set out in scenario notes. Since we didn't finish Agenda Item 7 on biodiversity and agriculture, neither Agenda Item 10 on invasive species, as a result, we will not reach agenda item eight on IBES tomorrow, since we do not have sufficient time to do justice to this agenda item. If we have some limit time after consideration of agenda item 10 on invasive alien species, we will devote it to continue here some observers on agenda item three, which we were prevented from hearing last week due time limitation. Tomorrow will be our sixth and last meeting under this informal session of SOSA 24, starting immediately with Adams chairing Agenda Item 7 on Biodiversity and Agriculture, followed by my colleague on the SOSA Bureau, Ms. Elena Brown of Antigua Barbuda, who will chair Agenda Item 10 on Invasive Alien Species. Uh, I do thank interpreters for their support and these additional minutes. Now I would like to close our session for today. Thank you very much for your cooperation and goodbye for now. Our session is adjourned.